So last night it got down into freezing temperatures again. Here it is, mid-April, and uh, it got down, well, there was ice on everything. What happened was it got foggy, and then it froze, and everything was iced up. Uh, the camper door was stuck all shut. I mean, not hard. I mean, it was easy to break open, but everything was froze. But now we're back up to 60 degrees. Nice breeze. It's a beautiful day. We're, it's going to turn cold again here pretty soon. But last night I actually started the wood stove. It's been a while since I started wood stove. I've been running a little buddy heater off and on. There's a little bit of cost. I got six cans. I think I said six. Yeah, six cans. One of those 20 pound cans that I got to get refilled. So Tuesday, we were going to go tomorrow, which is Friday, but that's Good Friday and everything's closed. So we're going to go Tuesday uh, to go grocery shopping and then we're going to get those refilled. And I think that's like 80 or $90 that we're going to get refilled. And you really think about it, we use propane quite a bit. We use propane for the uh, cook stove and the shower. We use propane to, for the buddy heater. I think $80 for two or three months, I guess is what it's been. That's not too bad in my mind. We're still way under cost. And of course, now we got the propane generator. I want to make sure that we have enough propane to run the generator if we ever need to. So I called again yesterday and it's still $14 to fill one up. And they're a lot cheaper than everywhere else. I called this one place this morning and it was $25 no matter how full the tank is. When you get a refill, sometimes you get a refill that's, uh, and your tank's half full, they'll just top it off and charge you that amount. But they were going to charge you $25 whether it was half full, almost full, or completely empty. This morning I was able to restack this firewood. It fell over a while back and I just left it on the ground put a tarp on it because some of this wood was pretty thick and it wasn't dry, you know, it was still green, it wasn't down to 20%. I don't know why I did this, but all the smaller pieces that were nice and dry and less than 20% are way down here at the bottom. So I just left it on the ground, covered it up with a tarp. That way I could get to the smaller pieces. Well, now things are starting to uh, warm up a bit. I went ahead and restacked it. The reason I restacked it is I came down here this morning and I'm really shocked what I saw. Snakes usually hibernate during these kind of temperatures. They're not <laughs> that active, but I saw a snake this morning. I guess it was trying to get into the sunlight to warm up. I thought that was really odd. I don't think I've ever seen a snake this early. He wasn't moving too fast. So I thought I'd get it off the ground and restack before the snakes come out. I don't want to have to be stacking wood and the copperhead be there. I mean, they love to hide out in the wood stack during the summer. Now this thing is leaning over so badly because the ground has caved in from the, you know, the ice, the ground freezes and then sinks. And so what I did to kind of level it out, and it worked out pretty good, was I ran some wood crossways and then stacked it up and that leans it back the other direction. That worked out pretty good actually. So I have this on piping. I, I put pipes down here at the bottom. That way it's not sitting on the ground, but it's all sunk down quite a bit. Of course it's rained so much, everything is so sloppy, muddy. I need to cut grass. It's getting really thick down here where the chickens are, but everything is just sloppy, muddy. It just keeps raining and raining. We had flood warnings yesterday. I don't really want to get the lawnmower out here and try to cut grass. I just run everything up. It would be pretty bad. So it wasn't that long ago, maybe a week ago, I cut this right here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell how thick it is, but it's it's already grown up quite a bit. I just ran back and forth with the lawnmower just to cut this and throw it into the chicken coop here, or the chicken run, I should say. Now you'll see, I think this is very interesting. It's really thick and green right here. I mean, dark green, and then right here, it's not so thick and it lightens up. And I believe the reason that is is because the chickens mess, you know, their, their droppings get wet during a rainstorm and it runs down into here. And so this has been fertilized really nice and thick. So again, over here, you'll see the same thing. It's really thick. We actually had the chicken coop over, well, the chicken run. We moved it over to that position, but it was here for a while. And then you come back over here and it thins right out. So. That chicken manure is really good. So I gotta get the grass cut. Eventually, Carolyn is gonna want me to till the garden up. I don't know when. I keep saying, give me plenty of time. And she just keeps waiting. So I would imagine sometime 
I guess mid-May. I'm going to come out here and till this up real quick. It's already been tilled up. I mean, this is really loose dirt here. Right now, it's just too muddy to do anything with. But it's really loose. I tilled it up really good, you know, several, several, several times last fall. Well, actually, late summer. So this won't be any big deal to till up now. It'll till up real easy. Carolyn and I were talking about all the work that we got to get done and how discouraging things can be sometimes especially when you got all this bad weather and you just can't do anything you know like till i would love to be able to just till a little bit here and there and then when she needs it it'll be all ready but i can't because it's just constantly raining or cut the grass i would love to be able to cut the grass but i can't because it's raining all the time or the well i need to fill the tank again but i can't because i gotta let the ground dry up a little bit before i can clean out the well i'll flush it out so it's just sometimes it gets pretty discouraging carolyn's got laundry she wants to get done and the problem with laundry is it starts to get backed up on her but she can't really do laundry as long as it's raining i mean she could but it'd just hang out in the outside to dry and it'll get wet and she's done that before if it gets too bad she'll just do it in the rain and let it sit out there until it finally dries out because if you get too far behind, then you just it feels overwhelming to get caught up. But we've talked about this on this channel before, about how to deal with being discouraged and overwhelmed. And I think a lot of people are surprised by how much you can get done by doing just little pieces at a time. I remember last year I was building a tiny house and everybody was getting kind of frustrated with me that it was taking so long. I could do that in a weekend build that tiny house in a weekend well I know he couldn't or you know there were several people who said it I really doubt it now you could have a crew of your friends come over you buy them a six-pack or a case or whatever you buy I don't know I don't drink and I'm sure yeah you could all put it together pretty quick but the way I did it was I'd work on it three hours a day that's all I could afford to work on it I had other things I got to do you know you got to do chores you had to worry about firewood that was my big concern is make sure we had plenty of firewood so i would work on the tiny house for three hours go work on firewood for three hours go work on whatever else needed to be attended to for three hours before you know it the day's over with we planned it that way if you plan to just do little bites at a time you don't even notice how long it's taking you think oh no i've accomplished my goal i got this much done in this amount of time but we plan to do $500 worth of work every month until it was built. So it's gonna take 10 months to build is what I said. But if you just take pieces at a time and you don't get stressed about it, you think, okay, I can get this done here or get this done there. I know Carolyn's getting pretty discouraged about her garden. She had a bunch of cucumbers and different things and she left them in the greenhouse and they said it was going to get down to like 36 degrees or whatever it was and she thought oh that's no big deal 36 degrees i can leave them outside well it ended up freezing that night this has been a really terrible year about freezing this late in the season and so she lost all those plants so now she's trying to regrow them and she's really struggling to get some of these plants to regrow she can't get cucumbers to regrow so she's getting discouraged and you just kind of have to think okay well if I don't have cucumbers this year it's no big deal we got what we really needed tomatoes and you just keep at it you keep at it until you feel better about it I'm gonna go over here and look real quick Carolyn said she came down here early and she saw one of the buff Orphingtons laying on an egg she wasn't sure if we got another buff Orphington getting broody and she wants to allow it if she goes broody to to lay egg, you know to hatch eggs she had somewhat success with it last time as you know we got some chicks in the house that she hatched she sat on them for 21 days but as soon as we moved her into the camper she stopped taking care of the chicks so we brought them in the house now we've learned some lessons we'll move her into the camper earlier and maybe she'll lay on the eggs and then after they're hatched she'll go ahead and take care of them so i'm going to come in here and take a look see if she's on it no i don't see anybody on it so she must have just been laying some eggs we got two eggs here so she must have been just laying an egg yeah all three buffs are outside i guess i should have done that before i opened the door <laughs> 
last year was a real struggle trying to get our chickens going we lost a lot the first set we ordered from a hatchery they sent it in the mail in the coldest climate you can imagine and they promised us that the chicks would be safe so we wouldn't have bought them if they hadn't made those promises they didn't do anything they said they were gonna do they said they call us when they made it to the post office post office decided to go ahead and deliver them in like five degree temperatures they said they put those hand warmers in the box with the chicks they didn't so they all died that was very discouraging and then we so well, then we went to Orsland's and we had a bunch of them get sick when we brought them home so here we had two batches now and it just didn't work Frenchie was actually part of that batch of the first batch of the ones that all died he survived so at least we got some out of it but here we had what we felt like was probably a rooster we weren't sure we had any hens out of that that survived so we kept trying we found this farmer and she uh, sold us a, uh, the rest of them and now we got a nice little flock but it was quite discouraging just keep losing chickens so this year i think in yesterday's video i told you that we're going to start incubating some chickens now that we understand the process and everything the only thing i'm concerned about and it could be discouraging the amount of electric that we produce also this incubator is digital i don't have a true sine wave inverter i might have to go buy one that way we can get true clean electricity right now there it's called hertz you're supposed to have 60 cycle hertz and when you have modified sine wave the hertz will go all over the place so if you click on this up next box to take you over my other channel i'd really appreciate it so i hope i can inspire you to take little pieces out of your chores so you don't get discouraged when you're living your dream thanks for watching